What's going on guys? Happy New Year's 2019 already. Let's kick off the new year with a behind the scene on a fitness shoot. So if you're interested in that, stick around. What's going on guys? Alexis here. Excited to share a behind the scenes shoot I just did a few weeks ago for Serena. Serena is a health and wellness coach and she needed some images to help market and promote her business. For this entire shoot, I used only two lights. And the main modifiers that I used were two P50 Magnum reflectors. I also used a few other ones, I used a softbox and an umbrella, but I would say for about 90% of the images, they were all done with the Magnum reflectors. One thing that I do wanna go over, if you're not familiar with Profoto lights, so you kinda don't get lost, is I do wanna go over their, their numbering system. If you use any Profoto lights, whether they're, they're monoblocks or their packs and heads, if you look on all their heads, they all have this numbering system, the scale right here. On their model blocks, it goes from eight to, to four. On some of their packing heads, it goes all the way from 10 to four. So what that does essentially is whatever uh, reflector you have, and you put it here and you slide it up those numbers, it changes the beam spread of your light, either narrows it or it widens it. And another cool thing about that is that it also changes the light output. So for the P50 Magnum reflector, I ran some tests, and at eight, which is pretty cool, it gives you a wider beam spread, but it also gives you an additional two stops of light. And when you have it all the way up to four, and on the P50 reflector, it takes it to a 50 degree beam spread, which is pretty cool. So essentially what you have um, is a sliding scale right here. It's almost like a built-in uh, grid system because you're controlling the beam spread of your light simply just by just lighting it, which is pretty cool. And another quick tip on these lights, if you have any of the Profoto model blocks, if you replace the frosted plate with a clear one like I did here, it gives you an extra third stop of light, which is pretty awesome. I do that all the time because if you're like me and you're power hungry, you need all the power you can get. Going into this shoot, one of the things that you wanted to do was use filters, color filters in front of the lens to get a more dramatic look in camera. I wanted to take a boring cloudy day and turn it into something dramatic and doing it all in camera and avoiding as much post work as possible. And one of the things that was essential for this shoot, on top of having the right gear, knowing what I wanted as far as colors go and the filtration was the location. The, the location was something that's immensely important. We drove around for a while to find the right place where I could shoot it at the right angle and get all the clouds behind her and get a clear view of that so I could let the filters do their job and bring in the drama up the sky. Once we found our location, the first setup we did was the two B1s put up with the P50 Magnum reflectors at position four to narrow the beam spread to 50 degrees and lighter with that. And once I'm having set up, what I usually do is maybe I tweak the light a little bit, but instead, other thing that I like to do is I move myself from different positions and I also direct my subject and either turn them a specific way towards the light or move them forward or back towards the light. And that kind of helps get the best angle and get the best light that falls on them. For some of these shots, I stacked up to four filters. I posted some of these images on my Instagram and I had some people ask me questions. Oh, is there a you know, preset number of filters that I like or certain colors uh, to get dramatic images? And the answer is there's no, there's no, nothing preset. Everything is kind of to style, to taste, to what you want to do. I'm not subtle with my lighting and I didn't want to be subtle using these color filters either. I wanted to go purely for visual impact and visual aesthetics. These images completely don't look anything real at all. They don't look like any realism at all. They're highly stylized and highly colorized, and that's what I was going for. Once I was done doing that, I took all the color filters off from the lens. I replaced one of the Magnum reflectors with the medium softbox, and I did one of my favorite things that I love doing, which was gel that light with the CTO gel, and I changed my white balance to 2700 Kelvin. And what that essentially does is it turns all the environment nice and blue, and it gives her a little nice pop and keeps her warm. And I changed a boring cloudy day into something that was more dramatic and visually appealing using color and light. After we got done with those images, we moved on to our next location, which was a basketball court. And Serena kind of wanted a different look and feel to these. And I didn't want them to look like your typical, like, you know, park pictures. So what I did is I shot her on a basketball court, a concrete basketball court. And the main thing for this one was getting the right angle, a high angle, so you could get kind of more of that concrete feel to it instead of your typical grass and trees in the background that you get from a park. And I just lit her with two magnet reflectors and cross litter. After that, she just wanted to do some more casual images of her drinking water. So this is again, a two light setup. One of them was with the magnet reflector at position four. And that one was pointed down at her. And the second light was to quiet those shadows down with an umbrella. And I balanced the strobes with the ambient lighting to bring in the clouds and make those colors pop. 
after we did those images, Serena wanted to do some fun images of her smiling and having a good time. And harsh light doesn't bode well for like nice images like that. So to kind of maximize our time and be efficient here was what I did is I put the 2B1s at full power of 10, put both magnet reflectors at position eight to give me the most output I could get and I bounced them off the rim. I did a test shot with my light meter and I saw I was actually getting enough light to get a proper exposure and I knew it was going to work from then. So I just brought Serena in and we just had a great time and started shooting and focusing on having a good time and making the images. And for our final location, Serena really wanted to do photographs in front of a brick wall with her Christmas sweater. The brick wall that we found was on the sidewalk that was a little bit busy, so I didn't want to set up any umbrellas or soft boxes there. So again, I just used the two magnum reflectors. I used one overhead. That one was a position four to control the bin spread at 50 degrees and not just like blast light everywhere. And the second light was the magnum reflector pointed down on the ground at position eight, you know, giving you an extra two stops and having the light at full power. It's enough to provide a nice soft field because you're bouncing it from the concrete. And this were the final images that we did. And that wrapped up our shoot. So I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I have another fitness shoot coming up in a few weeks. It's with Vanessa Joy. She is an amazing and accomplished wedding photographer in New Jersey. She's flying across the country to do the fitness shoot with me, which I'm super stoked for. And since it's a private commission, that means I could film and share everything with you guys. So I'm super excited for that. We're gonna be doing a bunch of things that I'm stoked for. So I can't wait to share with that one. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And all these prints that you see behind me, they're from a YouTube series I'm releasing called Breaking Down the Vision where I break down the line and set up and backstories to all these images. I've already re released about four of those videos, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. All right, guys, take care. Peace.